Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to the Morning Toast. Happy Tuesday. Hope everyone's having an amazing day. Um, my day started rough already because I woke up with a migraine Ooh. and like double down. So I'll start from the beginning. Please. Well, actually, I have to go back to the way beginning oh, if I wow. really want to start because... November 6, 1991. <laughs> Two, oh, bitch. Oh, shit. <laughs> I get confused because you and Olivia, like, were born, like, the same year, you know? You're trying to age me. No, well, yesterday, I, I'm, i like, committed. I've restarted Atkins. Oh, wow. And so yesterday was my first day. And they do say there is a bit of an induction fatigue. flu. Yeah, fatigue. For me, it's a headache. So I went to bed, like, knowing I was going to have a little bit of an Atkins headache. But fine. Like, that's what I deserve after weeks of eating, months of eating poorly. So I actually fell asleep last night at 8.45. Like, I was just so tired from the day back. Mm -hmm. And I woke up. So I slept, like, a whole 12 hours. But I woke up at 6 a.m. And I felt a migraine coming on. Well, no, it was there. So I took my my magical pill. I woke back up at 8 o'clock. And it was still there, which is not usually what happens mm -hmm. with the magical pill because it's magic. So I had to take another one. And it's, like, still sort of here. I don't know. This induction flu is... It's worse than before. Well, I'm just feeling disoriented as well because you and I are doing our show about in like 45 minutes earlier than we normally do. And that's because our duty as ants just comes first. We have a big day to take care of today because we are... We're on ant patrol. Yeah, no, but like we're on like unsupervised ant patrol. Olivia and Zach are moving apartments. So like Michaela needs to be just like looked after. And that's like going to be our job for the next 12 hours. And I just think that's very exciting. Like her brain is like a sponge and it's in our hands. You know, what should we teach her? Yeah, we're going to just show her the way, you know. And that is why, unfortunately, for really me, because you get to see him all the time. But that's why Theo's not here today, because we're on anti-duty. And so like we can only really deal with one of our nibblings at a time. And I did recently learn that that's the word for your plural nieces and nephews. And I am the queen of the nibblings. It very well may be. I don't feel comfortable around the word. It sounds wrong. I know. But but that's the word. But Nibblings. The, wor the word is the word. The word is the word. The word on the street is that I'm the word on the street. And ever since, like, Theo used to be my nephew, and that was it, period, point blank, and it would always be, like, in the male right. pronouns. But because now I have Magnolia and Michaela, it's I can't keep saying my nieces and nephews because I, I feel like that's also annoying. You only have so much time in the day. Right. So they are the nibblings. And they're the cutest nibblings I've ever nibbled on. Okay. And I feel like maybe that's like the cap for the amount of times we say nibblings on the show. <laughs> today. 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 Yeah. 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 Um, something I wanted to talk about yesterday that I forgot to talk about is that over the weekend, I finally watched Bad Teacher. Give it's, it up. It's on the, Netflix. Give it up for the content upper. And last night I watched two more episodes of A Place to Call Home. It's definitely growing on me like the Dachau of it all. Like I didn't see that. It's so deep. Like I, I didn't see that coming I'm, for myself. I just, I don't want to say anything because I want you to experience it in the way that Bevan Lee intended. Who's Bevan Lee? The writer. Her oh. name comes up at the end of it. Or his. I think it's a he. His name comes up at the end of every episode. I'm like, I know I'm not really paying attention, but there's no characters named Bevan <laughs> Lee. <laughs> um, but really quick, back to Bad Teacher. I had forgotten who was in the cast. And to be honest, when I saw that like Justin Timberlake was a sort of main character, I called you because, you know, there is a special corner of my heart for the hatred of Justin Timberlake. Like, it's a really special, special time for me. And I think that he ruins movies. Like, and it's, an, it's amazing that that movie, Friends with Benefits, is as good as it is. And I give it all the credit to Mila Kunis because Justin Timberlake is the worst. Like, he's the worst in singing. Like, I know I'm offending. We, we like, always fucking rail on Justin Timberlake. But I stand by the statements. And I think that he's a terrible actor. And, like, him with his fake glasses in the movie, like, he was just bothering me so much. And I couldn't believe that one of your favorite movies had... Justin Timberlake in it like it made no sense and he definitely didn't bother me because you're supposed to hate him in the movie whereas like in Friends with Benefits you're supposed to be like oh my god ship him and Mila when it's like no Mila could do better you know yeah um so I understood and the appearance and the mere presence of Cameron Diaz and Jason Segel like truly does outweigh um, Justin Timberlake's and presence maybe I love the movie so much because the only person who hates Justin Timberlake more than you is me yeah and I love the movie because like it really sees Justin Timberlake in the place that he deserves to be. Like, Weenie Land. Disrespect. <laughs> Weenie Land. Yeah. The disrespect on his name, like, is there. Yeah. And maybe I just, a part of me feels so justified. I, or maybe, conversely, maybe my hatred of Justin Timberlake comes from my love of Bad Teacher. Because, like, his you, character maybe is so intrinsically tied mm -hmm. to, what's his but name? But he's not that good of an actor. No, oh, he's Lecote. not. Oh, Lecote. The, uh, the, the watch company. yeah no but what's his name oh i have no mr. idea mr i don't know <laughs> like he's such a weenie such a weenie um the oh now 
if I may dive into like a few critiques of the film. Um, sure. I didn't feel like there was enough of like a really developed storyline in terms of the love between Jason Segel and Cameron Diaz. Like we knew they were going to end up together, but like honestly, she was like kind of mean to him the whole time. And like, I didn't feel like, I feel like I could have developed that a little bit more. I really feel that way. Um, the other way that I feel is that it was good. Like I, I, it was very, it was like a very good movie to watch on a Saturday, but like, I don't know if I could ever get in the mindset of someone whose favorite movie it is, you know? Okay. I just, it took a while for it to become, for me to realize that it was a favorite movie of mine. But what would happen is I would watch it like, you know, it's on E or whatever. And every time I put it on, like it brought a laugh. It brought Mm -hmm. a smile to my face. And then I always could count on it for that. And then it just became a favorite movie. Like, yeah, the first time I saw it, I wasn't like, oh my God, this is my favorite movie of all time. But just like the joy that it brings me has solidified that it is a favorite movie. I feel like, you know, part of, growing up and being an adult is identifying those movies experiences that just like bring you joy and like weirdly make you laugh and investing more in them you know what I just I watched the other night because it was on but I only watched maybe 20 minutes and I had two hearty laughs like literally I was laughing for minutes after cheaper by the dozen sensational (laughs) sensational movie they're on um Disney Plus, me and Ben recently I rewatched actually, them. I think I need to watch them both from start to finish because I was watching the first one and the scene where the kids like take, like they make Hank fall, uh, Ashton Kutcher fall in the water and then they have to take his clothes and put them in the dryer with for the, the dog big plan. Meat. And the daughter is like, one of the twins is like, sorry about your pants, Hank. They'll be dry in no time. And Ashton Kutcher goes, sorry about your pants, Hank. <laughs> They'll be there in no time. It's literally it's like, the best movie. I was literally laughing so hard because like that's the things that that's what like that's our we always do that with each other like yes. imitate and it makes me laugh every single sorry about panting. They'll but be there in no time. My one critique of Cheaper by the Dozen is the original movie. It's one of those movies where everything goes wrong. Like when she goes on her book tour and like literally her kids just can't behave for one fucking minute because she finally published a book. She's been working on the farm on the book for so fucking long. She finally gets published and goes to New York and she has to come home because her kids are acting insane. And then Oprah's going to come to the house and the kids can't keep it together. Like, yeah, it's one of those movies where nothing goes right. And like that bothers me a lot. But if you can look past that, it's really such a good movie. It's such a good movie. I'm going to have to watch. I was literally laughing like for minutes after just thinking about it. It's on Disney Plus. Okay, that will be. I have to add that. I know. I have to add it to my long list of things on my plate. Last night, I tried to finish Wild Wild Country. Again, I stand by the fact that it's a terribly done documentary because it makes an incredible story incredibly boring. But I am on the last episode, but then I fell asleep. So Mm. I'll hopefully finish that today. Got to get Mariah Carey's book done. Redhead's episode coming up soon. Have you seen Luis Velez? The reviews so far are wonderful. So it's just an exciting time always to be a redhead. It's always the perfect time to be a redhead. Always. Never too late. And it's never a bad time. And it's never too late. Um, we misspoke yesterday. I thought that The Bachelorette was on last night. But you know what? I really was surprised and joyful that it wasn't. It is on tonight. So we will be recapping it tomorrow. Sorry that I misspoke yesterday. But um, when it was like 6 o'clock and I was looking at my TV guide and it wasn't on there, I was just like truly overjoyed. Yeah. So today's episode won't be Afterdale. Tomorrow we'll, we'll have our Afterdale recap show. But today we'll have a nice quick show for you. Fast Five, everything else. Anything you wanted to say before we dive in? No, no other TV that I watch. So I guess we could just dive right in. Please. I guess there's no time like the present. None. Um, To get into the Fast Five stories that you need to know before you wake up and take a bite out of your morning toast. <laughs> and by the way, <clears throat> you hear that? Clear throat. You want to know what that is? My RDH all cleared up. Want to know wh- how? By letting everyone know that today's episode is brought to you by Vega. Vega has one goal, to help you power your story with premium plant-based nutrition that enables you to feel and perform your best. Learn more about how to power your story with Vega at myvega.com slash toast. Vega is spelled V-E-G-A, so that's myvega.com slash toast. If you're looking to upgrade your daily smoothie or level up your afternoon snack, Vega has you covered... From protein powders to bars made with real plant-based ingredients. Power your story with the number one plant-based protein powder brand in North America. Learn more at myvega.com slash toast. If you're looking for delicious options with nutrients to help support your immune system, Vega has you covered with Vega One and Vega Protein and Greens. With delicious protein powders and daily vitamins made with real plant-based ingredients, you can nourish yourself inside and out. Learn more at myvega.com slash toast. Vega is designed to help you rebuild your muscle post-workout and help you set yourself up for tomorrow's training. It's plant-based Vega Sport. Their products are here to help you power 
your story pre, mid, and post-workout. It's NSF certified for sport protein powders and supplements. Vega Sport is here to help. Learn more about all the Vega products at myvega, M-Y-V-E-G-A dot com slash toast. Check it out. And love it. Sign on. Get your goods. Get your goods, yeah. Okay, first story. We actually have some nice stories today. All right, let's Chris Chris Jenner is saying that social media is partially to blame for the end of Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Yes, I saw this. Uh, Chris Jenner spoke to Women's Wear Daily Beauty Inc. special issue, and she said, when we first started, there was no Instagram or Snapchat or other social media platforms. The world has changed, and now there are so many media options, the viewer doesn't have to wait three or four months to mm-hmm. see an episode. We can give them all the information anyone would ever want to know in real Real time social media is the fastest and most controlled way to get the message out I feel like that's what we've been saying all along yeah. you know like keeping up has always been like delayed from reality re- reality as it's happening in real time but like I've come to like that formula like I feel like we get the immediate reaction on social media but then three to four months later when, it, when it's not as like there's not as much at stake mm-hmm. we get to know what was really going on I agree that kind of balance never bothered me but I do understand how it affects a show's rating because not everyone is unbothered by it and not everyone is so interested in the intricacies four months after it's gone down right and I've always felt that they maybe could have done a better job in turning things around like if you can get Love Island episodes out every day I don't know why the Kardashians couldn't be doing a reality show in real time I actually think that would be so sick if like every week it was literally the week in the life of the Kardashians um but the show's over so it doesn't matter yeah I think that that would, I, I hear what you're saying, like for other shows that they should be a quicker turnaround. I think, you know, maybe they could have gotten it down to like one month or two months, but like a real time week like that's they've already, they're past that in terms of having to give that much up of themselves. You know what I mean? Oh, of course. Like that's for hustlers. It's not going to be their family right now because they don't need it. But if that actually is like an interesting format. Yeah. Like someone else who's on the up and up should do that because like. It's what people. You might get want. out what you put into it, but like they've already gotten out. Um, they don't have to work that hard. Of the Kardashians. Uh. The new season of David Letterman's My Next Guest Is was announced. Kim Kardashian's on it, and she cries, apparently. I think it's about Paris, because he talks about Paris. Um, Not Hilton, the city. Um, Dave Chappelle is on it. Lizzo's on it. Robert Downey Jr., who, like, I don't really care about. But I'm very much looking forward to Dave Chappelle, Lizzo, and Kim Kardashian. Oh, yeah, me too. I had seen that Kim is on it. Um, You know, my Kim Google alert went off. (laughs) Yesterday was a big day for Kim, because she was talking about a lot of stuff in her interview that I don't think she's ever spoken about. And I've watched a few of those David Letterman episodes. I watched the Kanye one last season. And I know that he is allegedly, like, a world-renowned interviewer. But, like, I was just, like, not vibing with him at all, like, whatsoever. And so the guests are really, like some of the most famous people in the world, like, I really hope, not to critique his interviewing style, it's just, like, not how I enjoy, like, watching interviews. I found it, like, a little annoying, and he was, like, talking over people and just, like, didn't really understand what the people were talking about, you know? I don't know if I'm making sense now, but it's the David Letterman and rubbing this, off on me. But you only saw the one Kanye one. Um, and I saw one more on the first season. I can't remember who. Someone's car alarm is going off outside, and I'm literally about to open the window and be like, like shut no, the and fuck like, up. and drop a rock on the car. That's what the problem with outdoor dining is in New York. Okay. It's done. Outdoor dining, like, I literally was sitting at a restaurant, and the car next to me was literally going off, and the owner was absolutely nowhere to be found. I, like, would lose my mind. Yeah, it's it's... That sound will make you go crazy because then you'll hear phantom sounds. And I'm like, I'm, I still hear it. Yeah. No, no, no. no. I'm, I'm blessed to have it turned off. But like, like, if I was having dinner next to it. Oh, my God. It was traumatizing. No. But also, I just saw a story in page six that Kim is allegedly planning her 40th birthday party on a private island <gasps> for 30 of her closest family and friends. So oh, my like, God. I can't believe that's not going to be me. Like, I I'm know. I'm so upset. But that will be, like, so exciting to watch unfold I can't on social media. Kim is 40. I know. That's something I feel like we speak about pretty frequently. I, I always forget how old, not old, but, like, that the Kardashians aren't, like, 25, you know? Yeah. They're 40. Courtney's 40 already. Courtney, um, Clo- Kim is turning 40. Chloe's like, 38. 33. Oh. Yeah, no. She, I think she's, like, 37, 38. Oh. You know, it's just, like, I always forget that. Yeah. No, I always remember, but it, and that makes what they're doing like even more impressive because they're yes. so relevant. And I think that they're, you know, changing what it means to be Influencer. a woman in your 40s. I, oh, a hundred percent. Chloe's 36. Yeah, I definitely, um, they change, like I could literally talk about them all day and what they've done for society. Like, I think they've changed what it means to be a woman in your 40s. I think they've changed, you know, what it means to be a curvy woman. Like, I think they've literally changed the frontier of beauty, science, fiction, like literally fucking everything. Yeah. I agree. Okay, next story. Um, some sad news about a man that we love. 
Jeff Bridges reveals he has been diagnosed with lymphoma and is starting treatment. This is a fucking terrible story. I love Jeff Bridges. Love him. And you know who loves Jeff Bridges? America. And we never have needed someone we can all like agree on more. We've never needed that more. Yeah. The Oscar winner revealed the news on Monday night on his Twitter account writing, as the dude would say, new shit has come to light. I've been diagnosed with lymphoma. Although it is a serious disease, I feel fortunate that I have great term... I have a great team of doctors and the prognosis is good. I'm starting treatment and will keep you posted on my recovery. Um, so, I mean. It's so upsetting. It's very upsetting, but our prayers and well wishes are with him. And I think he has the support of so many behind him. And I hope that he has a speedy recovery. I really do. Okay. On the count of three, say your favorite Jeff Bridges movie without thinking. Three two, one, stick it. it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if everyone would consider like the gymnastics rom-com that he did like weirdly 15 years ago, um, their favorite Jeff Bridges movie because I know he's been in a lot of like important films, but stick it is, you know what? That's on the list of content uppers. We need to really create a master list like a Google doc between us just because we keep remembering. Here's my master list. Stick it. Yours is bad teacher. I think Queen Latifah's beauty shop is a must to be on there. She's She's the man. Oh yeah, she's the man. She's she's all that's good too, but she's the man. Uh, Oh, also, Queen Latifah's Just Right is also a great movie. Comments. Oh, and also Last Holiday. Okay, literally. (laughs) Just Queen Latifah's, like, catalog of films. Yeah. Um, Hairspray. Hairspray is a content opera, even though it's, like, kind of a sad movie because it, like, deals with serious issues. It's still, like, the music is, it's impossible not to dance to. No, and and also, like, by the end, you are up. Yeah, because you're on the right side of history with Tracy. I would put Greatest Showman on there, too. You know, I have to have a viewing of Greatest Showman soon. I think it's been, like, a year since I last watched it. High School Musical. Ugh, yes. Twilight. Twilight. We'll make a list. Yeah, I'll put it on our Instagram. But these are the Jeff Bridges movies that are most popular. Big Lebowski, Crazy Heart, True Grit, Hell or High Water, Iron Man, Tron, Starman, Seabiscuit. You ooh, know what's funny? Ooh. Is like, I was like, I'm so, I love Jeff Bridges so much. And besides Seabiscuit, I've not seen one of those movies. I know, me too. But no, I, like, we need to get to the ones, um... We also need that to are watch. like less popular because those are the ones that we like. We also, I think, like need to watch The Big Lebowski. I think it's like an important movie. Oh, you think There's so? There's a few movies that I've never seen that I think I need to. Saving Private Ryan, The Big Lebowski, um, the one where Tom Hanks like falls in love with the volleyball in the ocean, Wilson, um, Castaway, Castaway. Those are three movies I I've think never I've seen. seen. Castaway, and I just feel like you need to see them, and I will see them at some point, but. I kind of like being the girl who's like never seen The Big Lebowski, you know? I've never seen it. I've never feel, felt compelled to see it. And I what, don't think I ever will see it. What were the other movies? Um, oh my God, there's so many out now. I'm on his IMDb, but I'm trying to find the ones that we like. Like the Stick It genre. Yeah. Stick It's so good. I feel like Stick It isn't even on his IMDb, I it's swear. Not, he probably like had it scrubbed because he was embarrassed. Kingsman, The Golden Circle. Oh. Oh yeah, he's part of the Kentucky crew. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's Love great in Kingsman. that. Love Kingsman. That's yeah. also a content upper. Oh, for sure. When is the sequel coming out? I don't know. I the, hope that the they treacle. wait till... The- it's the third. Oh, yeah. I hope that they wait till theaters are open because like, I feel like The Kingsman is a movie that is so much better experienced in a like formal movie theater. Yeah, I agree. Well... Jeff Bridges, we love we're you. We're wishing you our, we're sending our best energy out there. We just, we know you're going to get through this because it's not called gymnastics. No, it's definitely not called gymnastics. Um, okay, our next story is a follow-up to yesterday's story because we're getting a little bit of more answers, but also, and, and more questions about the Zoe 101 reunion, reboot, new song, and also just like a website that you register for. Right. Also, I would like to sh- thank all the toasters who wrote us in sharing their ideas for, for what it could be what the reboot could be and I would say one of my favorites was you know the school's shutting down like they ran out of funds or like there's no one to run it and Zoe and the crew like get back together to get the school back on track okay I like <laughs> that idea but like I think PCA is like probably like the wealthiest school in the you know country. it's like so fully funded the one that I liked the most was that they go back for the time capsule because it has been 10 years yes that's prob- did- that probably is what they're doing Okay, no, it's actually not what they're doing, oh. and it's um, extremely confusing. Also, in addition to Chantal Jeffries, like all of these other TikTokers, influencers, Noah are in Beck, it. Lauren Gray, um, Charlie D'Amelio, the D'Amelios, Jojo Siwa, Harry Jowsey from that's Too Hot the to weirdest handle. one. Yeah, so. Jamie Lynn Sphere has posted a longer clip captioned surprise. Finally, the legacy continues. The follow me Zoe 101. See it first experience. 1025 link in bio for tickets. The website 
for the confusingly and long-windedly no, titled... What type of reunion special needs tickets? It's, a, it's an experience. They're selling $20 tickets, which include admission and the single digital download, as well as bundle packs, including both the admission ticket and merchandise ranging from autographed CDs to VIP Zoom access. The digital event, whatever it is, says New York Post, is set to take place Sunday at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Welcome to campus Come join us, is what they say. This is very strange and seems like kind of tacky to be like selling tickets and merch for Nickelodeon. So this is what I think it is because it's still unclear. And even though we've just gotten it's more so answers, unclear. we've gotten more questions. Yeah. I think it's a Zoom yeah, where too. the cast joins and like gets all Zoomy and Zoe-y and people can buy tickets to watch, to watch that. I don't think it's any sort of formal reboot like we were asking, wishing, and praying for. Mm -hmm. And then I guess like the new influencers are coming in to, you know, make it influencing. Relevant. And I think Chantal Jeffries worked on the new theme song. I think that's the biggest thing is that they did a redo of the theme song, which we sang for you yesterday beautifully. And I think that that's the redo that they should be selling. But that's just me. Chantal Jeffries is a DJ. Yeah. In addition to being an Instagram girl. Yeah. And she's eating a chain smoker. Is, is what I saw on her Instagram yesterday. Yes. Wow. Girl's a lot of boyfriends. I'm happy for her. I'm a little jealous. Yeah, she has good taste too. Ex- excellent <laughs> taste. I agree. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is yesterday I did warn you on this show that uh, Paul Butcher, who played Dustin, her little brother, was really acting out on TikTok. And I posted some of the TikToks on her Instagram. And I wanted to know what you thought of that. What was that reaction? How did you feel? My reaction was utter shock and also shock. And it's hard to say. I was truly rendered speechless because I know that you told us about it. I did. I warned you. you. But you didn't. Like, you really didn't. Don't say I didn't say I didn't warn you. You didn't warn us. You didn't warn us. You didn't warn me that you would be posting two of them. Well, you know what? they And I looked into it. I just... He's like one of the maybe five people who is always going to be a little brother, you know? Yes, there's some people who just never grow up. To see a little brother posting sexual TikToks like that, it's really shocking, you know? And then I looked how up how old he is, and he's your age. He's 26. How would you feel if Zoe 101's little brother was your age? I thought it was you <laughs> walking through the door. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Bailey. <laughs> Chetney. Um, no, I know. I just, I, I thought it was important that the world see those TikToks. And I'm sorry that you were kind of collateral in that. But that's the job I chose to do. And I don't think it would be right if I didn't do it 100%, 100% of the time. And I don't think he's involved in this reboot. And I, I do. I know. I don't, I don't see his name. Oh, I, I do. Because all the, the castmates have been making TikToks with him. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, but his name wasn't in the official, like, tags. Paul. I'm not seeing a Paul. Oh, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. I feel like he doesn't want to be America's little brother anymore. No, he's not big brother now. Ugh, no, he's daddy. Go wow, wow, Jackie. That's daddy to you. <laughs> but no, by the way, his TikTok is very like Zoe one. In addition to being pornographic, it's also very Zoe 101 friendly. Like he's always like harking back to his past. I think the two of those are um, inherently conflicting. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> couldn't agree more. Wow. Inherently. Inherently. Um, is the next story the one brought to you by Stamps.com? It is. So let me just oh wrap God. up this Thank one. Thank God I was so, so nervous. So that we can get to that one. Okay. So in conclusion, Zoe 101, reboot question mark, October 25th, like link in bio. If anyone gets the tickets, like let us know. It's exciting nonetheless, but confusing. I feel more confused than I did yesterday. More confusing. But maybe I can help you with that because, Jack, it's the holiday season. And this holiday season, more people will be mailing stuff than ever before. That means the post office is going to be busy. You don't have time for that. Stamps.com brings the post office and now UPS shipping right to your computer. Mail and ship anything from the convenience of your own home or office. With Stamps.com, anything you can do at the post office, you can do at home with just a few clicks. Plus, Stamps.com saves you money with deep discounts that you can't even get at the post office. They bring all the services of USPS and UPS right to your computer. Stamps.com is a must-have for any business, whether you're a small office sending out invoices, an online seller fulfilling orders 
or during this record holiday setting season, just sending packages to ones you love, Stamps.com can handle it all with ease. Simply use your computer to print official U.S. postage 24-7 for any letter, any package, any class of mail, anywhere you want to send. Once your mail is ready, just schedule a pickup or drop it off. It's that simple. And like we said with Stamps.com, you get five cents off of every first class stamp and up to 40% off priority mail and up to 62% off UPS shipping rates. Stamps.com is a no-brainer, saving you time and money. It's no wonder over 900,000 small businesses already use stamps.com don't spend a minute of your holiday season at the post office this year sign up for stamps.com instead there's no risk with our promo code toast you get a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale no long-term commitments or contracts just go to stamps.com click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in toast that's stamps.com enter toast stamps.com never go to the post office again you can sign me up for that. Sign on. Never go to the post office again. It works for me. Next story in some casting news that I personally don't agree with, but I look forward to hearing your thoughts. Okay. Dominic West. Ugh. Him again. Sicko. Has been tapped, potentially not confirmed, to play Prince Charles in The Crown. Oh, no. 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 No, no, no. All no, wrong. no, 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 All no. All wrong. Wait, no. I is know. Dominic West isn't British, right? Like, or is he? Uh, I don't know. Because in the affair, he's not, but like he very well could be. First of all, what I love about the affair, I mean, not the affair, the crown, is that their casting is really on point and, and it's never with mega stars who like look like Princess Anna. It's always kind of like smaller British um, actors and actresses and it just makes it more believable because you're not like oh that's the guy from the affair playing prince charles it's just i With feel a like few exceptions i would say like olivia coleman is i didn't know her before oh okay helena bonham carter oh yes and you know what she's the only one i can't believe i'm like <laughs> yeah. you're from tim burton yeah or whatever. totally i feel the same way i don't know what she does but i know she's not tim burton-y yeah she's tim burton i think she was actually married to tim burton right i think she might have been i yeah. think she's his muse i think so too um you know what I mean? So it's just like, I I hate this. And also I'm like hating Dominic West now because like his messy Lily James like public shithole show is really bothering me. And I just think like, honestly, the crown is so above that. And you know what? He might have had the role and I feel like he could have lost it given what happened this week because the crown doesn't want to be associated with trash like that. I agree with everything you just said. And I just want to add, I think my, my primary point for why I'm against his casting is he doesn't look like Prince Charles. Oh, of course. I mean, once you and get... Like, and it, just looking at him will be distracting because I'll be like, oh, I fucking hate you from The Affair, the worst show I ever watched. Oh, I liked The Affair. The worst show. <laughs> and he was one of the worst characters in like television yes. history and so I don't want to see that foch in my viewing of the crown like the crown is my safe space mm -hmm. and I need to get him out of here wait can I ask you a question mm -hmm. so he's supposed to play the next Prince Charles yes but the season that, that's coming out in November is already filmed with like a young-ish Prince Charles when he's married to Diana, right? And so they're looking for like an older one? Yes, okay. seasons five and six. So he's probably what, like 50 and 60? Or? No, no, I think he's like, it's the, uh, the 90s and the early 2000s. Oh, so it's still like the Diana stuff. It is. It would be covering his split from Diana, which would be after like they've had children and so right. it'd probably be a new Diana and his explosive affair with Camilla Parker Bowles. Right, okay. Um, but it's final talks that he's in to play Prince Charles in seasons five and six of Netflix's smash hit royal drama, The Crown. I do hope that, um, I, no, like, I don't, I hate to like root for someone's failure, failure, but it's not a failure that I'm rooting for. I just hope that he doesn't get this part. You know, I hope he gets the next part that he's going after. A bigger one. I hope the other person who's in final talks gets this part. No, and I hope that this podcast like lands on the desk of someone who's important at Netflix because I feel like this is a huge mistake. And like, if you could know that like, we are like a focus group and I'm telling you, I know we're right about this. Like if you could avoid ruining an almost perfect show just by listening to some dumb podcast, like I implore you, please send this to your boss at Netflix. Like, please do not cast Dominic West. Like I'm begging you. And also like, aside from our personal opinions aside, he doesn't look like Prince Charles. Agreed. And there's so many, and like also, I feel like he probably is British now that I'm thinking about it. I don't think they would cast an American like that. Honestly, uh, no, I really, I feel like it's very true to British. Yeah, I could see him being British. And now I'm thinking about the way he talked as Noah in, and he was always like talking a little weird. So he definitely is British. And he was also just with Lily James in London. He's totally British. Totally. Yeah. Um, please just don't. Like it, it would be a disgrace to the legacy of, 
the crown the show and the actual crown. It would be a disgrace to Queen Elizabeth to have herself associated with a show like The Affair. I agree. You know? So yes. unfortunately, it's going to be a no from us. But we look forward to seeing what you do with the casting. Yeah, we do. Okay, our fifth and final story is a little Zoom masturbation news. This is such a weird story. This it was all over my Twitter yesterday. Such a crazy story. Jeffrey Tubin was masturbating in front of New Yorker bigwigs, the report says. Okay, I just <clears> have <throat> to say, this article is so misleading because I, for like the longest time, thought it was Jeffrey um, Tobin. It's two O's. No, but the actor from... Um, Arrested Development. No, no, he's not from Arrested Development. Yeah. Jeffrey Tobin. Is that his name? I don't think it's Tobin. I thought it's it was... Jeffrey... Jeffrey... Tabin? Tambor? Tambor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. He's like from everything. He was in an entourage. I literally thought that this was about him, and I'm like, this guy's disgusting. This is not about him. This is about the New Yorker writer and CNN analyst Jeffrey Tubin, who didn't just expose himself during a Zoom work meeting. He was allegedly caught masturbating in the call with some of the magazine's biggest names and has been suspended from the publication. He said, I made an embarrassingly stupid mistake believing I was off camera. I believed I was not visible on Zoom. I thought no one on the Zoom call could see me. I thought I had muted the Zoom video. I apologize to my wife, family, friends, and coworkers. So when I, I mean, this is like everyone's worst nightmare, first of all. And when I read the article, it was my understanding that like he was on a Zoom and then he put his like um, laptop screen like down a little bit, like almost closing the computer, which directed the camera to his genital area and uh, people on the call like weren't sure whether he was like he got caught by accident or he had moved the camera to show his penis like which is so disgusting honestly you know what i think it was i think he probably thought by putting the camera down like he was turning it off like yeah just, so this is like an old person zoom like zoom dilemma yeah well to be honest i mean Justice for everyone like, else in the said, Zoom. The, it said, two sources said that at one point it looked as if Tubin was taking another call and lowered his camera, and that's when they saw him getting to work on himself. It was unclear what, if anything, others on the virtual call saw. So I think what happened was, like, he was getting a call, probably, like, FaceTime, like, ha about to have FaceTime sex, and so he lowered his computer camera so that they wouldn't see he was on another call. Right. Not realizing that the other thing he was penis. about to do was so much worse <laughs> yeah. than him looking disrespectful on that's, another call. That's the other thing. Well, also... If he got a FaceTime call, he has a wife, so... Right, it's like cheating. That's why he apologized to his wife as well. Got it. I mean... Or maybe he was just, like, pulling up a video on his phone. I don't know. Either way, like... It just seems strange to me that, like, you know, there's so... In quarantine, like, we're spending so much time at home. There's so much time to masturbate. Like, why do it when you're, like, in the middle of a call, you know? Yeah. That's kind of weird, you no, know? It's beyond weird. Um, also, like, if you are going to masturbate on a Zoom call, I would just recommend that, like, you are extremely careful about, like, making sure your camera and your microphone are off. Maybe, like... You know, I just think that would be step one. Well, that has become my favorite TikTok trend is like college students who are working remotely, like sharing them accidentally and like not realizing their mic was on. Because when you're in like a Zoom with 300 people, everyone's mic is supposed to be off except the teacher. Um, so like everyone's like probably in their bedroom, like talking to their friends on their phone, like talking to their parents. And it's so funny to see people who realize that their mics are on because it's like the teacher's assigning homework and like this girl literally puts her hand over her eyes and just like screams into her hands. And she didn't know that her mic was on. It's so funny. It's literally my favorite TikTok trend of like, and if that's what comes out of like college students having to study from home, like I'm okay with that. Yeah, but it's also like, yeah, I've seen some where like people go to the bathroom and... Yeah, well, those are fucking disgusting. Like, I don't want to see that. But kids, like, when you really think that, or also, like, I saw this one this morning where you're, all the sorority stuff is, like, now being done via Zoom, like, bid day or whatever. I don't know. I wasn't in a sorority. And it was, like, this girl is on a Zoom, and she thinks she's on mute, and she's, like, sending a Snapchat to her friends, and she's, like, guys, it's, like, big little association day, and, like, I literally hate my big. <laughs> and obviously, she was not on Zoom, and, like, her big, she wasn't on mute, and her big literally heard everything. It's so funny. It's it's a real problem. That I, is funny. I, I but then it's also, never experienced. It's also sad when no one turns their mic on. Like, remember when Stitch yes. was posting those TikToks? Snitch was posting these TikToks of, like, teachers teaching on Zoom and, like, everybody's camera and mic are off. And the teacher is literally talking to no one because you know that the kids aren't paying attention. It's and, like, so sad. It's so sad. I think everything about, like, Zoom learning is sad to me. And it's, like, 
or you're getting to see someone masturbate. Yeah. Also, why are not, these our options? Not interested. No, I agree. Like, why are these our options? No, these teachers who like it's probably hard for them to figure out like the remote learning, the technology. Their kids are probably helping them just to get on a Zoom with 300 people and like literally have nobody respond to you. But like, I actually it makes me want to cry. Like, it's so sad. Like, if you're a college student and you listen to this, like every now and then, just like go off mute and be like, okay, cool. You know, like, mm-hmm, right, yeah, like one of those. You know, yeah. Or it should be, like, mandatory to have your camera on and then knowing that your camera's on, like, try not to masturbate um, in front of your coworkers. It's so sad. I'm like, we got to get the kids back in school. No, you guys. For the sake of the teachers. Yeah, for the counselors and for the campers. It's so upsetting. Like, these TikToks, like, they're, I think they're meant to be funny, but, like, is it normal that I'm in my bed, like, sobbing? No, it's, it's so sad. It's so sad. Um, just, as, just respect your teachers, guys. Respect your teachers and respect your coworkers. And don't masturbate on Zoom. And don't masturbate, yeah. Um, And that, those are the best size stories that you need to know, and I feel as though you needed to know them. I felt like they were good, like, and robust. Yeah, quite robust. Yeah. So. Um, There was no TV on, so no TV recap. I'm remiss to let this show come to an end, but our aunt duties. I'm remiss to let the show come to an end, but our aunt duties, like, are so important, and we're really so excited. But also, the show's not coming to an end. The show's not coming to an end, because we have a special interview, um... Right after this, for our podcast listeners, if you're watching on YouTube, head over to the podcast because we're talking to Craig Conover from Southern Charm. He's such a nice boy. I love him so much. Like, And his sewing company like really took off. We talk a lot about it. Um, and I actually feel like he's getting justice because when he started sewing, like everyone made fun of him. Like His friends, the show, like Andy. like It was like a joke. And now he has like a legit partnership. He's like a whole line of merch. And I'm really happy for him. So it's really interesting to hear him talk about like the comeuppance of sewing down south. And as... Craig stands like from the beginning it's it feels nice for us too it's like what's the word is it retribution no it, it's like vindication something like that yes yeah, you know what we like to call it justice that there's only one word <laughs> like I don't know why we're circling the drain plain old justice <laughs> so enjoy our interview with Craig Conover and we'll see you tomorrow for hump day we'll be recording the bachelorette actually tomorrow sorry it wasn't today and, and for hump day we can confirm Theo will be in studio Thank the Lord. Thank you guys so much for listening to the Morning Toast, the Millennial Morning Show, where we deliver the fast five stories that you need to know every Monday through Friday. So if you're watching us on YouTube, please feel free to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. We are also available as a podcast anywhere podcasts can be found. So that's Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Public Radio, iHeartRadio, CastBox, all the places. So wherever you listen to podcasts, find us Morning Toast and leave a five-star review about how beautiful, stunning, and smart we are. We're also available on Amazon Music now that they have podcasts. Just wanted to let you guys know that. Thank you guys so much for listening to the Morning Toast, and we hope you have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. 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 Goodbye.